to serve the Lord, you need to know who you serve. There's plenty of Lords out here in this world, but there's only one Lord that's above all Lords. There's one Lord that's classified in this Bible that he is the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. The Bible tells us that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, meaning that there is one Lord that you can put your trust in, one Lord that you can believe in, one Lord that you need to have your faith in, and there is only one Lord that's going to give you salvation, and that is Jesus Christ. There is only one faith letting you know that there is all type of religions out here in the world, but there's only one faith that's going to get you into the kingdom of heaven, and that is the faith in Jesus Christ. Many people believe there are different faiths out there in the world of many ways to get into the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus says that I am the door of the sheep, that if any man come in by any other way, that he is just as a thief. Jesus is the door, and he's not the doors. The Bible says he is the door to be with that. He is only one Lord, and there is one faith, and that is to be in the body of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the head of the church. Amen? Amen. It says there is only one baptism. That doesn't mean when people have taught, I've heard that you only get baptized once in life. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about baptism in the death of that when you get baptized in your life, Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus went straight forward in and straight forward out. When you get baptized and immersed in the water, straight man in and out, you are being buried with Christ. And when you come out of the water, you are being risen with Christ. That's why the Bible says one way. There is not two ways. There is not even a 1.5 ways. It's only one way to the kingdom. And it's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And when you get baptized, you got to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts, the two, second chapter, verse 38, says, Repent, all of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins. That we have to know who we put our trust and our faith in, and that is the Lord. Many people don't know who they put their trust in. Many people don't know which Lord who to put their faith in. But I'm telling you right now, we need to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel, the 12th chapter, verse 24, it says, only fear the Lord. Lord, know there's only one Lord to fear. And it says that serve him in truth. When the Bible says serve him in truth, that means we serve him by his word. And then when we serve him by his word, we're serving him through the Lord Jesus Christ. How can I serve the Lord Jesus Christ through the word? I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to go in and help you out. First of all, you go to the word of God and read what thus the Lord has said, how to live your daily lives. The second thing is in John the first chapter, verse one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So it lets you know that the word was God and down to John verse 14, it said the word became flesh, meaning that God was manifested in the flesh, not God becoming man, but God was manifested in the flesh and blood of the body of Jesus Christ, that who we should follow. We are to follow Christ's steps. We are to follow his steps and no one else's steps. It ain't Elijah Muhammad. It ain't Buddha. It ain't whoever in this other world that people are trying to preach that who we must follow. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. This is how we serve God. We serve God through the truth. So who is the truth people? It's kind of quiet. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, you can talk to me. Jesus is the truth and the way and the life. So we are to serve him. If we're going to give praises to the Lord, know who you're giving praise to. The Bible tells us, pray ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. The Bible tells us, praise him for his permanent power. The Bible tells us, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. You got breath, I got breath. Guess what? Animals got breath. Fish of the sea got breath. They breathe under water. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So why are people not praising the Lord? Just because they got their trust in other gods in this world. That's because they ain't got Christ in their life. That's because they ain't got the word in their life. They ain't got no seed in the ground. 
that we are here to put our trust in the Lord. Right? right. This is a prophecy that was spoken into existence that we commonly know as Palm Sunday. So where the prophet Zechariah in Zechariah in 9 chapter verse 9 I believe was spoken of this prophecy to be fulfilled that the daughter Zion which is Jerusalem would let her king come down and ride on a donkey and which would be Jesus Christ. And in this chapter it speaks about Jesus went and told the disciples to go get the coat of a donkey and bring it to him and that he's going to ride from the Mount of Olives and into the town of Jerusalem. If you pay attention to what's going on, this is a revelation of what happened last week when we talked about that. We talked about the four forces of judgment. Jesus is going to return to the world in Revelation 19 chapter on a white horse with many crowns on his head with his robe dipped in blood with a name that nobody knows. And as the sign would say, King of Kings and Lords of Lords. The first horseman that you saw we talked about had only one crown on his head. This one right here is going to have many crowns on his head. And he's going to come back to Jerusalem. But this time, the first coming, he came to Jerusalem riding in on a donkey. And I want to break this down a little bit if you let me please. Is that when Jesus comes riding in on a donkey, a donkey represents many things um, in the Bible. And for one, it represents humbleness. That Jesus riding in a donkey could have rolled in on a coat of a horse or anything because the people said, who is this? If you look outside right now and somebody pulled up in a 2024 Rolls Royce, you're going to be asking, who is that out there? <laughs> if somebody, and then you got to be paying attention to their apparel, what they all got on. But if somebody comes in here in a 1960 Pinto, I don't know if they made it in the season, but I'm saying that. But if they came in a Pinto or whatever, then we're going to look at them different. So when Jesus came in on a donkey, they was wondering, who is this coming in on a donkey? But Jesus was showing that we need to be humble, that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. The Bible says, if any man exalts himself, he shall be abased. But if any man abase himself, he shall be exalted. Let me tell you what that means. If you think that you're higher than you not ought to be, you're going to be brought down. If you're full of pride, you're going to be brought down. But if you just humble yourself in whatever you're doing in your life, according to the will of God, he's going to bless you. If you humble yourself, he's going to exalt you. If you just humble yourself, he will work with you. Sometimes it takes time in life, but the Lord is working. All we got to do is keep praying and let the Lord exalt us. Don't let men exalt you. Don't let your job exalt you. Don't let your school exalt you. You let the Lord exalt you because we sit here and we let everybody tell us this and that and get us the big head. But we let the Lord exalt us and that he'll carry us through. Amen? We have to be humble. The second thing I saw out of the donkey is that peace. A donkey means peace. And that when Jesus comes into the town, he showed his first coming is that he brought peace. That what he's trying to show is that we need to have peace amongst each other. And the only way that we can have peace amongst each other is that we got to have Christ in our life. Isaiah the ninth chapter verse 6 speaks of that many names that Jesus shall be called. And the Lord said that he shall be called the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. That if you ain't got Jesus in your life, you do not have peace. You're not going to have peace out here in the world. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're not going to have peace because you're going to get sick. Somebody's going to go through something in their life. Something always going to be happening in someone's life. But you got to have that inner peace. Jesus is all about the inner that shows the outwardly. Many people like to show the outwardly, but don't show the inwardly. Because when you show just your outwardly, that means you're just a hypocrite. But Jesus wants you to show inwardly that it will express outward. That's why he says, therefore let your soul light shine before men that they may see it and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Truthfully, we don't need these lights right here. You are the light. I'm the light. You all are lights in here. That light shouldn't even have to be lit because we're going to light it up because God is the one that's going to stop us to be the true light. Amen? There's one thing else about a donkey, and many of us don't want to hear this, is that a donkey works. A donkey pulls. A donkey pulls the weight. What Jesus was trying to show is first of him that he was going to carry us on his shoulders to the cross of Golgotha, where he's going to be sacrificed. 
sacrifice and carry upon the sins of the world. He was showing that also we must too must work. The Bible says that we are ambassadors of Christ. We are God's workmanship created in Christ to do good works. When you watch a donkey, he plows the field. He works. He plows the field. And when he plows the field, the donkey looks straight forward, not paying attention to what's going on behind him. But what's going on behind him is that that field is getting plowed up. What are you trying to say, Tommy? I'm going to tell you what I'm trying to say is that keep moving forward. Stop looking behind you because Lord is plowing the field. Up. And once the field is getting plowed up, he's planting the crops. Paul says that Paul watered, Apollo's planted, but God gives the increase. Let God give the increase as you keep plowing the ground because there is work to do, people. The Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Pray unto the Lord of heaven that he send more labors to work out in the harvest of the field. So he let you know that life is not going to be easy. You're going to go through some struggles. You're going to go through some trials and tribulations, but you got to pull that weight. You got to keep pulling and ask the Lord to be with you. Amen? Amen. Those are significant in the donkey. But his second coming, yes, he's coming on a horse and not a donkey. The second coming, he's coming not for peace, but he's coming for war. He's coming for the war of Armageddon to take out anybody that's against him. And then the second coming, when he comes to work, he's coming to tell the faithful, well done, thy faithful servant, that you've been faithful over few. Come on, little higher, I'll make it uh, faithful over plenty. So when you do your work, it will pay off in the long run. So what I'm trying to say is that keep staying in the Lord and it will pay off in your life. Amen. The devil is very busy to knock you off. The devil was busy in that person's mind to go to that Christian school, to go shoot those kids, to go shoot that person, and go shoot a janitor. Janitor, I mean, nobody deserves that, but why would a person just go in and shoot in a place? They locked the doors. They did what was right, but the person shot the doors out and went in there and still killed those people. You got to be ready at all times, people, and be prayerful at all times. Yes, that's still probably pray. I mean, it just something happens with the devil. But we always have to be prepared because you never know when your time is going to come. Right? Amen. That when Jesus came, they said, who is this? And I want to tell you who Jesus is. Jesus is the son of the living God. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they said, some think you're a prophet. Some think you're a prophet. Some think you're Isaiah. Some think you're Elijah. Jesus said, okay, that's fine. But who do you say that I am? See, to know Jesus, it got to be a personal relationship. I can't worry about what she thinks about Jesus. I can't worry about what you think about. But what does the book, what does the word say about Jesus for you to believe in Jesus in? Jesus is the son of the living God, but Jesus is God. Now, yeah, we're going to get somewhere because I'm speaking to and saying, how can Jesus be the son of the living God? And how can Jesus be God? I'm glad you asked, because let me explain something. In the book of John, we already said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. So they know that God was the Word, and God became flesh, meaning that he became in the human form. The scripture says that he took no reputation, but took form of a servant to be in the likeness of men. First Timothy, the third chapter, verse 16 says, God was manifested in the flesh that justified by the Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on the world, and received up to glory. Now, you have the Son, you have the Father. Let me explain this. The Son got tired. God don't get tired. The Son slept. God don't sleep. The Son eat. God don't eat. God <coughs> is a spirit. John the fourth chapter said God is spirit. Jesus is flesh and blood. When you say Jesus is God, you're not saying the flesh and blood is God. It's what dwell in the body of Christ is God. In 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 19, I believe, it says, to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. The reason why God came into the flesh is because there was no man that can redeem man for 
for the sin of the world. How do you think Jesus lived a perfect life without breaking 613 laws? Nobody in this planet right now cannot do that. We all have broken the law. We all have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. But this is a saying. Have you ever heard the saying, when you can't I'll get nothing done, I do it myself. This is what God basically did. That he came as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. This is the one that came out of the stem, out of the rod of Jesse. This is the one that came from the house of the son of David into the tribe of Judah to where the scepter would never be removed from. And the person I am talking about is Jesus Christ. That for unto you a child shall be born and you should name him Jesus, but he shall save all his people from his their sins. This is why Jesus came. God came as in the flesh to die for our sins because his law is in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 22. It says that for by law, most things have to be purged by blood. If there's no um, shed of the blood, there will be no remissions of sins. This is why God for so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Many people think there's three gods. Many people think there are two gods. Some people might think there are five gods. But Jesus is the God. When Thomas saw Jesus after he resurrected, you can read for yourself. He came behind the closed door. What did Thomas call Jesus? He said, my Lord, my God. If Jesus knew that Thomas was blaspheming, he would have told him right then, don't call me God. But he understood and knew that Jesus was in the flesh and blood, but he knew who was inside of Jesus Christ, and that was the God the Father. That's why Jesus said that I cannot do nothing unless what my Father shows me. I cannot do nothing unless he, when he tells me what to do. This is why Jesus said that let this stuff pass from me, nevertheless not by my will, but your will, showing that the flesh and blood do not have power over God. Whatever God says, God is going to do, and God is going to work out in our lives, whether we like it or not. Amen? Amen. Jesus had a mother. God ain't got no mother. Jesus came into the flesh, but Jesus existed way before times. In the before times in Genesis, the third chapter, when God created the heaven and earth, that was Jesus. Jesus says, I come in my Father's name. Jesus, the name of God is Jesus. It's not Jehovah. Jehovah is a title name. I am is a title name. Christ is a title name. All these are title names, but there's only one name that we come to the Lord in, and that is the name of Jesus. Why do you think he says that go into all the world and baptize them in the name? He didn't say names. Listen, he says name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What is the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Peter says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the name of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everybody all right? When you deliver the palms on Jesus' feet, as they walk through, they deliver palms and garments. Palms meant a sign of victory. That they was looking for an earthly king to come in and rule over Jerusalem. Not understanding that this will be the spiritual king. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is of heaven. And when the people sat here and threw their palms for victory, Jesus was showing a sign of victory for us. That when he done it across for us, he gave us victory. What did he give us victory over? Sin, death. The Bible says, oh, death, where is thy sin? Oh, great, where is thy victory? We have victory over the law. We're not under the law. We're under grace. But do they tell us that we are free to do anything we want to do? No. No, 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 no. Jesus said, you love me, you still follow my commandments. Jesus freed us. And God knew that he had to bridge the gap between the three. And the only way he could do that was coming, taking the form of a servant, and dying for our sins. Yes. Jesus is the way. He is the life, people. That Jesus came, and Jesus was here. He was before and after. When you die, who are you going to see? You're going to see Jesus. But the Bible says that it's appointed once man to die, then after that, judgment. When you take your last
last breath of life. And your life is sucked out of your body. And then they bury you and say, go on up the yonder. Whatever they want to do, they open your casting or whatever. You are ready about to meet the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a quick transaction from here to there. So while we have time, don't think that it's a purgatory to have you can sit here and say, well, Lord, I've done this. I've done this and that. You said, apart from me, I never knew that. We always want to right now to see Jesus as Lord and Savior in our life. If you haven't been baptized, get baptized. If you haven't received the gospel, the gospel is being preached right now. That receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because once you're gone, you are gone. We know everybody here probably has somebody died in their family. They gone. I mean, it's okay to go look at the graves, but they gone. Now you see it here, and one day we gonna be gone. But what's your faith gonna be? Because your faith can't help them, and they faith ain't gonna help you. But while you still have time, please receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. When you threw your garments down, as I'm getting ready to close out, they threw their clothes down for Jesus. But Jesus can care less about your clothes. He can care less about my clothes. You don't care if you got your Chanel on or your Gucci or your Levi's or I don't know all these brands, but he don't care you got your shoes on or whatever. He don't care about that stuff. The Bible tells you to dress modestly. Yes, that's true, but he don't care nothing about your clothes. I'm going to tell you what he care for. In Joel, the second chapter, he said, render your hearts and not your garments. Stop throwing your garments out to the Lord and throw your heart into the Lord. Amen? Amen? He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He don't want your fancy clothes. He don't want my shoes. He don't want my car. He wants my heart. And none of that stuff is, is useless. It's good to have, but it's useless. Everybody all right? Amen. Trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. And as I get ready to open up the church, not here, but to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'd like to ask if anybody would like to come up to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, knowing that he came down to Jerusalem for peace, but his next go around, he's not coming for peace. He's coming for war. He's coming for who was with me or who was against me. So if you make your choice, I made my choice that whose side that I want to be on. And my side, I want to be on is Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank Jesus that he was took into the cavern as he carried the cross, as he needed him. And as you know, when Jesus even needed him, he showed something in life that we all need some type of help. We carry our very own crosses in life. When you see someone stumble, try to help them back up. And help them carry their cross. And that's what we have to do in life. But the devil is very busy. And Jesus, as he laid his life down for us, he nailed to the cross. And he shed his blood. That was our antidote. That was our fascination of clearance of sin. That we've been free from the law of sin by the law of love to Christ. And that he was buried tomorrow and tomorrow too. Went to preach to the Catholics that was in the grave. Give them a chance of the days of hope that we all become as one. On the third day, early that morning, first day of the week, I want you to remember that the next week, first day of the week, that he rose for all power 